Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to What The Math. In the previous video we've talked about Ketonian planets and I explained to you what they are and how they actually are created and how they work. And here's actually a really good example of a real life Ketonian planet that we have discovered, or not a Ketonian planet, but a planet that's about to become a Ketonian planet in a few million years, that we've discovered relatively recently. This is a planet by the name of HD 209458b, you can find it in uh, Space Engine by typing this right here. And this is essentially um, a hot Jupiter, very, very close to its parent star, and you can kind of see it emitting gas right there. And so as it spins around uh, or orbits around the star, it's, it emits its um, hydrogen and helium into the outer solar system and is slowly being stripped away and is creating this kind of a um, inner shell that will be left after it, and this will be a Ketonian planet. Now, in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to use Universe Sandbox 2 to actually compare a possibility of having a Ketonian planet, Jupiter, Saturn, and possibly other gas giants, and compare them to our Earth. And let's see actually what happens if one day, for some unknown reason, our poor Jupiter and our poor Saturn also become Ketonian planets, which is actually kind of almost impossible, but you never know, it may happen. And it, what happens, what will they look like, and how will they compare to our Earth? Welcome to What The Math, and I hope you enjoy this video. And so here we are in Universe Unbox 2, and we're going to try to actually turn Jupiter, Saturn, and possibly Neptune and Uranus into um, Ketonian planets. But the way we'll do this is, well, one way of doing this is how we did it in the previous video, but basically placing each of them individually very, 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 very close to um, the star, the sun, and by basically burning away um, their their atmosphere, their hydrogen. This is maybe not, not close enough yet, so let's actually do it a little bit closer. And so here we go. Uh, it's getting hotter and hotter. It's very, very close to the sun, and it's going to start losing its um, its hydrogen shell any second now. But you'll notice that Jupiter doesn't actually lose very much. As a matter of fact, it's losing like milligrams per second, and that's because of its really strong magnetic field, which you can kind of see right here. So magnetic field does protect planets from losing material, and if you remove this right now, it will start losing material really fast, but still not fast enough. As a matter of fact, I would have to actually wait a few months, real lifetime, not game time, real lifetime, for it to actually lose everything completely. So I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to just uh, look at the composition here, and you'll notice that we actually speculate that there's anywhere between like six to possibly 45 masses of um, silicates on the inside, but we're going to need to go with a game value of 6.338, and we're just going to essentially remove all of the hydrogen from this uh, planet, and then change this mass to 6.38. That's kind of cheating, I guess, but you know what? For Just for Jupiter, this would actually take really, really long time for us to turn into a true Ketonian planet. For other planets, however, we can actually easily do this because if I were to place Saturn here now, and let's actually place Jupiter a little bit farther away now, uh, possibly somewhere close to Mars, and uh, go to our next planet of Saturn and do the same with Saturn. And if I were to do the same with Saturn now, you would notice that it actually starts losing its mass a lot faster because its total mass is not as high as Jupiter and because its actual magnetic field is much lower as well. Uh, so we're going to do this to each of these planets and then we're going to basically place them in the region around our true solar system, so somewhere between Earth and possibly Mars. And what I'm going to do at the end, uh, or close to the end, is try to terraform them and see what they look like. So Saturn is next, and here for Saturn, this would also actually take quite a long while, so there will be quite a long wait, so we may have to cheat here as well, because even after waiting a few minutes, this hasn't actually decreased much, but it would decrease if you were to place this around a much hotter or a much more massive star. Like, for example, if I were to do the same with Sirius, uh, Saturn will lose its atmosphere a lot quicker. And so we're just going to use the same technique to change it into a Ketonian planet and now place it a little bit farther away, let's just say at a distance of approximately um, 2.5 astronomical units. Now Uranus is next and you'll notice that Uranus has a slightly different composition. As a matter of fact, Uranus and Neptune are known as ice giants because they actually have a lot of um, carbon-based compounds 
uh, on the inside and not as much hydrogen and not as much helium. So these two will actually have a very different composition by the time they're done burning out their hydrogen um, shell. So even though there's not a lot of hydrogen here, there's definitely going to be a lot of other stuff like, for example, carbon dioxide and um, methane and so on and so forth. So various compounds that have carbon in them. And whether those compounds actually do get burned by the sun um, and get dissipated into the other atmosphere or if they stay on the planet is something we don't really know just yet. But I'm going to assume that they're going to stay because they are heavier than hydrogen and helium. And so for the solar winds to uh, shoot them out, to essentially to strip the planet of those materials would be a lot more difficult. So it might, it might happen, but it might happen really, really slowly. So we're just going to leave them on um, Uranus and Neptune and keep them where they are right now. And Neptune is the last here. Let's just place it back to where it was, or a little bit closer than where it was before at a distance of approximately three astronomical units. And let's take a look at what we've created. So we now have a completely different solar system with not one, not two, uh, but something like seven different terrestrial planets, or at least planets that might be habitable. So we have, obviously we have Mercury and Venus, then we have Earth, Mars, and uh, oh, right before Mars, or right between Mars and, and Earth, we have Jupiter. Now it's still a little bit too hot here, and that's because I think it didn't cool down yet. We're going to manually cool it down and let's zoom into it and see what it looks like. So essentially this is the uh, Ketonian Jupiter, a Jupiter that has no gas or specifically hydrogen and helium atmosphere. And this is what it would kind of look like. Not very hospitable, not very pretty looking, uh, but we can make it prettier and make it more hospitable by adding a little bit of atmosphere to it. And here, let's just give it Earth atmosphere and also adding a little bit of water. I'm gonna throw some water in there and make it slightly better looking than what it is right now. And here's some water on the surface here. It's unfortunately still ice, but that's because it's still a little bit too cold here. And we can change that by, well, let's actually move it a little bit closer to the sun. We're gonna move it to a distance of about 1.2 astronomical units, a little bit closer to Earth, and obviously a little bit closer to the sun as well. And so total temperature here should be about 10 degrees Celsius, and it's going to start warming up any second now. And you'll see that it now has both atmosphere and also liquid water. Now, one thing I just noticed about Jupiter is that it's spinning ridiculously fast. Now, this is in second, 30 seconds per second, and look how fast it's spinning. And its current uh, rotational period is something like 15 minutes. Yeah, it takes 15 minutes to rotate once. That's one day in 15 minutes. That's way, way too fast. We're going to just change that to something a little bit more manageable and make it stop spinning so fast. Uh, and there we go. So it's now a little bit more hospitable. It will now also increase its temperature. The water is melting and you can kind of see that it's looking better and better, but still not very, not a very beautiful planet. But nevertheless, this is a Jupiter that we can kind of live on now. And the mass here uh, is about 6.4 masses of Earth and total gravity here would be about twice as more powerful as it is on Earth, so you would actually feel twice more squished and would be able to only jump about half as far as you are on Earth. But this is uh, Ketonian Jupiter. Next on the list is, of course, Ketonian Saturn. We're gonna change its rotation speed as well. Uh, it's still a little bit too hot, but it's cooling down dramatically. It, it is going to be a little bit too cold here, so we may have to place it closer to... Um, Let's place it a little bit closer to the sun as well at a distance of about 1.1 astronomical units. Get a little bit brighter here. And we'll now also give it atmosphere of about one atmosphere in total. And of course, give it a little bit of water. But look at that, there's actually water here already. So it looks like in a few seconds, this will become some sort of a water world. And yep, there we go. It's going to become a completely and totally a water bowl. It's going to be a, a world filled with oceans, very, very deep oceans, and nothing else on it, not even a single island. So here, if we were to actually live here, and suddenly it's become a nice planet. Well, that's interesting. But yes, yeah, so here, if we were to live on this planet, Actonian world of Saturn, we would either need to bring a lot of different ships and vessels that can swim in the water or um, live on a much colder ice planet that's covered in ice sheets of water. 
So that's Saturn, and next is Uranus. And Uranus is going to be get placed a little bit closer as well. We're going to go into motion and slow down its spin. And now let's just uh, cool it down manually and look at what happens here. So this world or this planet also has quite a lot of different water. And uh, as a matter of fact, it has more water per volume than uh, Saturn did. And all of this will turn into an ice world as well and now i wonder if this is going to actually freeze over afterwards chances are it might actually freeze as well or stay as a water world we we'll just uh, run a few more there we go it has become an ice world as well so the water has frozen so we can basically either turn this into a, an ice world or a water world by increasing the temperature and moving a little bit closer to the sun and the last on the list is Neptune, and I have a feeling Neptune is going to be just very, very similar to these other objects that we just looked at. So as soon as you change the atmosphere here and decrease the temperature to something more manageable, it will very likely become an ice world as well. And actually, look at the really cool looking, almost like vein-like structures on the surface of Neptune. These are obviously randomly generated, but it would be really awesome if they actually existed in real life as well. And so anyway, so here comes the water world and here comes the ice age for Neptune. It has now become an ice world. So even if we were to create Ktonian planets in our solar system, it seems that really only Jupiter is the only sort of planet where we can kind of survive on. So if Jupiter were to become a Ktonian planet, this would be the only world where we can kind of terraform it to look something like Earth. But the only difference here is, of course, the fact that the gravity here would be much higher than Earth. So we would have to create some sort of a gravity generator so that it's more comfortable to live here. But all in all, this is what these planets would look like. So this is Jupiter. This right here is Saturn. And it's sort of somewhere between ice world and water world with a total mass of about 2.8 masses of Earth, so with slightly higher gravity as well. And I guess swimming here would be a little bit more difficult as well. Then we have Uranus with a total mass of about 13.5 masses of Earth, so here the gravity is much higher, even higher than on um, Ktonian Saturn, and uh, the surface gravity here is about 18.5 meters per second square, which is twice as high as it is on Earth. And then we have Neptune with the highest surface gravity of all of the Ktonian worlds. And this is essentially an ice world where once you land, it will be very difficult to walk and you'll probably start sinking into the ice and the snow because of the high gravity. And let's look at all of these planets in the chart formation here. So here you go, Neptune, Uranus, Jupiter, Saturn, and of course, Earth. Venus, Mars, and Mercury. So this is essentially what would happen if all of our gas giants became Ketonian planets. And that is all I wanted to show you guys in this video, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, and also share this with your friends who may also like watching space videos or videos that teach you stuff. In the next video, we'll talk more about various space things in our universe and our, in our galaxy, and you'll get to learn something else. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later, and as always, bye bye. And if you would like to help this channel grow and help me make more high quality videos, there's always a Patreon page where you can actually help me financially with purchasing better equipment to make better high quality videos in the future. Thank you guys for all of your support. I really appreciate all of your help. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.